Hi everyone and welcome back to another episode of Occam Razor TV. I'm delighted to be joined today by Martin and David from Centurify who are launching an IDO on Occam Razor on the 16th of November. David, Martin, it's great for you to be here. I'll just give our viewers an intro into Centurify. So Centurify revolutionizing the ticket, ticket market uh, by tokenizing tickets with NFTs and smart contract technology. Uh, they're doing this to reward artists, uh, event organizers, and ticket holders. So Martin and David, uh, maybe you could kick off by just telling us a little bit about yourselves, where you're joining us from today, your backgrounds, and, and how you got into crypto. Sure, sure. Shall I start, Martin? You go. Yeah. Well, <laughs> both of us are based in, in, in Oslo, Norway at the moment. Um, uh, my name is David Rothbold Norberg. Uh, I am the CEO of, of Centarify. Uh, I have a long history in, in the fashion industry, actually. Um, um, started my, my first fashion company in, in, well, when I was 25 uh, and had been you know, going the ranks uh, as a sales manager at Tommy Hilfiger, uh, actually the, one of the youngest in, in, their, in their system, I was 20, 21. Uh, been experienced a lot of ups and downs in, in the fashion industry. Um, and... and um, What's what's so beautiful with the fashion industry? It, it's 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 a very creative industry, and it also goes very hand in hand with with uh, with the music industry. So, uh, during my time in the fashion industry, I, uh, I for example, dressed up Post Malone, uh, likes the people like like Pink, Kygo. Uh, that's also where I met uh, Martin for the first time. Uh, dressed him up as well uh, back in the days, and, and did a lot of uh, collaboration with, with him. So, so yeah, that's that's a short, short and brief uh, intro about myself and and how I met Martin. Yeah, and uh, and I'm uh, Martin Gierke. I'm a creative director of Centurify. Uh, I've been uh, fortunate enough to be a successful artist for the past, I guess, twelve years. Uh, I'm a DJ, producer, songwriter, uh, and uh, been able to tour the world. I've been a judge on The Voice Norway. Uh, I've sold platinum many, many times over, and uh, yeah, have a have a nice little successful uh, music career to look back on, um, and uh, that's kind of where my background comes into to this project. And um, it really started, you know, with the with the pandemic hitting and and realizing how fragile the music industry is and how you know important there is to to get a change going and and that you know. It's it's unfair now for for the fans and it's unfair for the artists. So so that's kind of where the core idea of, of Centurify was born. Awesome. I think you guys have both been a little bit modest there because uh, Martin, you're part of CLMD, right? So you've got millions of, of streams on YouTube for our viewers. Uh, Martin is a really established artist. Um, so that's really cool. Go and check him out. Uh, we'll provide like links below to uh, to the project as well. And David, uh, we've spoken before, but I didn't know about your your history in the the fashion yeah. industry. So that's really yeah. interesting. Yeah. Um, so how did you guys get started in blockchain? What was it about blockchain as an industry that sort of that sort of interested you to explore? Yeah. Well, uh, for my for my well for me, uh, I, I I got very interested back in two thousand and seventeen, two thousand and yeah sixteen. Uh, but as I was, you know, heavily invested both time-wise and, and uh, money-wise in my own companies, I never invested, but I was reading a lot and, and, and following it. And even introduced it to, to my big brother, who is also co-founder of, of, of Centarify, who, who yeah, made a, has been in the crypto space since 2017. So, so basically what I did, I was, uh, when the pandemic hit, it also became a little bit slower for the fashion industry, right? You know. People don't need to dress to get out to dinner or go to parties or, or you know live live events. So so uh, and so, so passing my time, I you know read, started reading a lot of books. I even started mining. Uh, you know I still I still mine actually. Uh, started doing some trading. Also took some technical analysis uh, courses. Uh, and during the way, you know uh, when you realize what you know the the uh, technology uh, can bring it popped a lot of ideas, you know, and, and many, many problems uh, that are, you know, out there today that can be easily solved with, with, with a blockchain and smart contract technology. So, so, so yeah, it, it's, it's a, it's a beautiful and fashionable, um, uh, fascinating um, um, space, basically. <laughs> and, and, and I fell in the rabbit hole. <laughs> yeah. 
So, so for for my sake, uh, my brother actually Bjorn Bjerke, who's uh, who's a technical leader here at uh, Simplify, uh, he's been pushing me into crypto. He was uh, first first five thousand into Bitcoin, so that says a little bit about his experience. Uh, and he's he's one of Europe's uh, top leading uh, blockchain um, uh, what do you call experts. it experts. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and and he's been pushing me for forever, obviously. Uh, and giving me satoshis for Christmas and, and, uh, and birthdays for for many years without me really, you know, getting into it. But with uh, with the rise of the NFTs, you know, in, well, from already 2017, but mostly, you know, with the with the booming and starting in 2019, I, I saw how this technology could affect my line of work and and how it could uh, you know implement into the music industry and. And how songs can eventually become NFTs. So that's kind of where my interest peaked, and, and then of course I was hooked and and got into this, and, and yeah, been been hooked ever since, really. Awesome. Yeah, it's hard not to be uh, to be hooked once you have gone down the the blockchain rabbit hole. So um, you guys first announced Centurify during the Cardano Summit 2021. Uh, yeah. which was only like pretty much just over a month ago now, but it seems quite a long time ago. Um, and we appeared with with you guys, did a short video, uh, and you helped co-host the, the Norway community meetup. Um, so, you know, for those viewers who, who didn't see that and who don't know, uh, can you just give us like a short intro to Centurify, maybe give us like a, an elevator pitch of, of the project itself? Yeah, sure. Sh should I do it or should, should you do it? Oh, what? CEO. Yeah, no. Well, so, so basically, what we usually tell for people who are not into crypto, uh, we basically explain it as, as your, your uh, you know, uh, ticket master, uh, but on blockchain. Um, the tickets uh, are NFT tickets, uh, and uh, we have a, a, you know, a smart contract uh, technology implemented in, in these. And you would say, why? Well, on blockchain, uh, it's impossible to fake. So basically, fake tickets are history. With the smart contracts, you have the variables where you can set a maximum and a minimum resale price, which basically prevents scalping. And scalping is a huge problem in, in, the, in the music industry. So, I mean, we're not here to, to uh, erase the secondary market, but we would really like to uh, get the organizers and artists uh, to monetize on it and also take control of it, uh, over it. Because as, as it is now, it's basically under, uh, well, out of control. It's a it's a very very unfair world um, where you know as as the global uh, revenue stream for live music ticketing events is about to hit thirty two billion dollars, mm -hmm. uh, the secondary market is almost fifteen billion dollars. So that's a huge revenue stream that's not going back to the artists and organizers, which which is you know devastating and also hurting the artist in in situations where where you know there's the 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 art is suffering right. So, so it's very important for us to to cut out the middlemen and and make sure that the artist gets their fair share of the money, and also that you know, as a consumer and fan, that you know that your money is going to the artist, and also that you're actually paying for a fair price for your ticket, and it's a real ticket, yeah. even if the show is sold out. We we usually have a a way of explaining it. I mean, we we have the artist who is going to you know to play on a on an event. Uh, and you have the consumer who wants to have the music. The artists just want to play, and the and the consumer just want to have a you know a ticket, uh, and everything around it. You know, the marketing, you know, the ticketing system. The artist doesn't care, <laughs> and the consumer doesn't care. But that transaction between them, that is where we come in. We're going to make sure with with blockchain and smart contract uh, technology to make sure that that transaction is is fair. So the consumer won't uh, you know be a victim of fake tickets. Uh, the consumer will have a fair price, and at the same time, uh, the organizers and the artists will 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 have a fair pay, basically. Uh, and and yeah, it, it's quite a kind of romantic way of 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 explaining how 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 we approach it. For sure, yeah, and this is like really important. I mean, I was just discussing with Martin just before we we kicked off the interview that um, back before I got into blockchain, back in my university days, we used to put on events, and we'd have nearly a thousand people at these events, like music nights, yeah. um, and we would sell tickets, and then like yeah, a couple of days before the event, they would be on sale for like double what we had charged, um, yeah. and there was no way for us to stop that. Yeah. Um, and, you know, I've been in lines where scalpers are, are charging like, you know, thousands, many times more yeah. what the actual ticket 
price was. So it is a big problem. And, you know, with blockchain and programmability, I think there's a huge opportunity there. And obviously, you guys have, have identified the same. So um, you talked a little bit there about uh, we had like the the artist, we've got the organizer, and we've also got the fans and the ticket holders themselves. So who are the intended users of Centurify? Is it all these audiences or is it specifically for the artist? No, I think that it's it's actually mostly for the consumer, for the fans. Of course, there's a lot of benefits for the artist, uh, but you know we we want to target both non crypto and crypto people. So there will be a fiat on ramp, so that you know if you're not if you're scared of the crypto world, you don't need to even have to think about it. You know, for for you as a consumer, you're just downloading an app and you're buying really cool tickets. Uh, and and that's kind of also a, a little romantic part for us because you know we are teaming up with some of the best uh, NFT artists out there to create really cool tickets itself. You know, and, and growing up going to concerts uh, or or even you know sports events, I would always save the stub the, uh, from the from the show because that was kind of my memory and of that show. You know, so I had had that you know uh, nostalgic uh, emotional uh, uh, value for me. Uh, and I think that we're bringing that back, you know, instead of those boring PDFs. So that's a really good point, uh, what you said, Martin, about um, that the end user won't necessarily know that it's based on the blockchain. I think that not a lot of projects think about this. They don't think about the user experience. So I think if we're going to make blockchain mainstream and we're going to have mass adoption, then yeah. um, it's important that people don't necessarily know they're using blockchain. Like I often say that I don't really know how my visa card works, but it just works. And we need <laughs> yeah. blockchain to, to be the same. Yeah. Um, and, and I also think it's really cool in the sense, you know, that I, I was telling you about my brother who was giving me Satoshi's uh, for Christmas and, and birthdays. And then I later on realized, wow, I actually have some money here. And, you know, the point that you're collecting in the fees and, by 2025 or 2030, when crypto is everywhere, you actually realize that you bought some NFTs back in 2022, 2023, right? So, mm -hmm. so that's going to be a cool like uh, uh, empowerment of you. And, and we, we call it humanizing crypto because we're, we're actually bringing it out to the mainstream masses without them, you know, being confronted with crypto. Yeah, exactly. And I mean, if they can, like you said about the ticket stubs, if you've got that where you can look back on your NFTs like you would a physical item and, and have those memories, you know, it's great. You could have it all on a wallet. So just thinking about that, you guys going to have an app like a wallet where you can keep these NFTs and then people can manage their access to, to all events like that. I know, David, you said like uh, it'd be like the event bright of, of crypto um so with that is that what you guys are looking to do like develop an app where you can manage access to these tickets yeah so so, uh, so basically what we are start we have what we have started uh, developing now is is uh, is a, a, a first and secondary ticketing marketplace um where you can buy your your you know concert tickets uh at the same time we're also building in a music niche and if uh, nft art marketplace so so for example you know so the artists uh, can can put out there you know in their digital art uh, if it's a cover of an album or if it's you know if you can do digital merch for example uh, or, or you know um, albums uh, it's a, it all depends a little bit of the record labels as well uh, but 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 yeah I mean we're creating a a uh, you know live event and a music NFT universe basically that that's uh, that's what yeah. we we're, we're doing it's it's so much more than just you know a ticketing platform because one of our our Things that are important for us is that today, uh, you as a listener of music have become very passive. So you go into Spotify or Apple Music and you're searching for playlists. You're not searching for artists anymore. So it's incredibly hard for an artist to build a brand, especially you being an up and coming artist. And we feel that like where where you connect the most with a new artist is by seeing them live. So if you're going to a show, that's where, where you really become a fan. And if you're already in our app to buy the ticket and then can find digital merch and you know different stuff to to connect with the artist, we're building that bridge back up again, uh, so that you know we we have fans for life. That's really cool, and and like you say, uh, David, as well, like it wouldn't just have to be, you know, like a, a marketplace for tickets. There's a whole host of other NFTs you can make available and. And work with artists, I guess, on on those NFTs yeah. with exclusive, you know, exclusive merchandise and content, maybe just for users of of Centurify. So yeah. we've spoken a lot about like musical artists, but is there any other like, um, you know, like uh, I guess 
we call them industries, but like creative industries that you would explore, could the same be used for like uh, theater and that sort of thing? Is that something that you've got on your roadmap or? Well, I mean, I mean, the, the technology that we're building uh, could go for, you know, sports. It could go for, for any, you know, um, live event uh, venue, basically. But I mean, as, as, as you know, Martin, uh, 14 Platinum Awarded DJ, has his network all over the world. You know, I have been re working very close with the music industry. Uh, and we have some great advisors also in our advisory board who has a large reach worldwide when it comes to the music industry. So it's kind of a, you know... Uh, we, we want to be focused and, and focus on, on the music industry at first. And, and then we will see down the line. I mean, we have been discussing and been approached also by, by, by sports, uh, interesting sports uh, uh, companies and, and people from the sports industry, um, especially football. So, so we will see a little, a little bit down the, down the line. I mean, the first MVP will be basically, you know, it's music. It's music. Mm -hmm. And we, we have, you know, we have this benefit that we're attacking the music industry from the inside out. And, and, you know, we have we have already that foot in the door, which is incredible hard to to get, you know, coming from, you know, a lot of project to today in crypto is in crypto for crypto mm -hmm. and by crypto. So, so it's kind of hard, you know, even if you had the, the similar idea that to, you know, even get a, get those meetings with the with the big guns, uh, which, you know, fortunate enough, we uh, have that network in and, and we, we actually started, you know, talking to artists and to. To labels and to booking agencies and getting them involved in this uh, first, so that you know they they love this idea. They think this is super interesting and they're ready to to try it out as soon as we're ready to go to market. So so it's uh, very interesting to kind of attack this from yeah from the inside out really. Mm. That's a really good point, actually, because often, you know, you see in the, I mean, I've been in the crypto industry since like 2017, and there's a lot of uh, developers and technically minded blockchain people who have great ideas, but they don't really know anyone in the industry to take it forward, or it's hard to actually gauge what the appetite is for those ideas. And then you've got, on the other hand, you know, like uh, people who, are, who know the industry well, they don't know how to build the blockchain components, but you guys have got both. You know, you've got blockchain expertise and you've got industry expertise. So it sounds like everything's, you know, coming together uh, perfectly for you guys, which brings us on quite nicely to our next question. Um, so obviously you guys are an accelerator project you announced during the, the summit um, and we're a Cardano launch pad. So we always like to ask, why is Cardano an interest in blockchain for you guys? What does it offer that you think maybe other blockchains like ethereum or solana or polka dot don't yeah so so yeah i will take that one, one martin if it's okay it's oh, so, for you so yeah <laughs> well, well first of all you know uh you have you know the the proof of stake you know which is an environmental friendly thing uh the scalability interoperability as as a as a main point but also i have a kind of a personal relationship to the approach of of the cardano network uh uh, my my wife, she's a doctor and uh, specializing in cardio cardiology, and uh, you know she has been go going through a lot of peer reviews because she's getting a lot of her article published. So the the peer review and academic approach to 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 uh, the Cardano um, and all the changes uh, that are being done has to go a peer review. I know what it takes. You know, due to the pandemic, I've sat ne sitting next to my wife, hearing, you know, her have to, um, you know, debate about her 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 findings, right? Uh, so that's that's one thing. And uh, also looking at, you know, where Haskell, you know, is, is used, the code language, uh, in, you know, by by NASA, uh, but also in medical tech, you know, and why? Well, the, it's 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 a code language that is built in a way. Well, you have to write it in a way uh, where, where it basically can't fail. You know, uh, there is only one way to, to the solution. And, and with that said, it brings us. Uh, both, you know, the environmental part, the scalability part, uh, but also the, the the security of it, you know, uh, and 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 that's why it's for us a def definitely a winner and the reason why we we chose uh, Cardano as as our platform to work on. That's a great answer, yeah. And, and like you say, like functional programming languages are so much more secure, especially if you guys are developing something where you know, um, I, I guess. You know, a ticket represents value, it represents money, it represents people's livelihoods, and that needs to be secure. You know, if that's compromised in some way, which 
you know, quite often Solidity smart contracts do get compromised. Um, you know, there's, it's a big problem. So implementing in Plutus through Cardano, I think that's a could be a huge step forward. And it's going to be cheaper, right? Because transactions on the Cardano network are so much cheaper. Um, so, I mean, the next question that we always like to ask as well is, you know, you guys are doing an IDO, so you're issuing the token. So what's the uh, functionality of your token going to be within the Centurify ecosystem? What can users do with it? And uh, what's the purpose of like holding the token? Yeah, Sh shall I or you go? I uh, think this is a great CEO question. Yeah, sure. Now, but I will take it. So, so basically, you know, the the Centurify token, the Cent token, will serve as as fuel for the whole ecosystem. Uh, so, so when when the organizers and artists mint their NFT tickets, it will be done by by either you know fiat on ramps, but in the in the background, it will be uh, the Centurify token that will be, um, you know, minting these tickets. Yeah. Uh, when it comes to to the holders, and and you know, we we. We were, we have um, we will offer a, a staking possibility, uh, you know, at tier three, tier two, tier one, uh, where you can get, you know, you will get rebates on NFT um, uh, NFT tickets resold. Uh, you will also get, you know, early access to to ticket sales, early access to NFT sales. Uh, even you know, but this is a little bit of variables as well. I mean, some of the artists are, like to have people you know, ba you know, uh, backstage or you know, to do a meet and greet. These kinds of things will be offered for 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 the token holders, as well as discounts when it comes to to purchasing purchasing the tickets, as well. So so yeah, but there are so many interesting utilities that we have you know that we're discussing. Uh, you know, and our technical leader said, you guys, you have to calm down a little bit because you know, first of all, the product itself is. So such a good you know good thing so but we have so many things that are, that are coming up uh that that we, we we believe that would you know blow it, it will be you know the ticketing for the future basically and it will blow. well one of the things also is that you know it's so customizable so you know every artist will have their ideas that they want to implement to to their tickets right so that you know we we will just facilitate and and some artists you know wants to do meet and greet some doesn't so so we want to just we're we're gonna make a, a set menu that we will offer and then you know they can add on specialties that they want to do and you know so we it will be it will be a live thriving you know uh, by itself. Awesome, but you know, and you say that your CTO says to slow down, but it's better to be told to slow down than than speed up. And I think we get. I mean, we don't bring any of them through Ockham Razor, but there's a lot of projects out there that like they come up with a token, they launch a token, they sell the token, and then they think, what are we going to do yeah. with this? You yeah. know, and, and usually those projects don't have the longevity that ones who have already got a solid token omit model do. It sounds like you guys know exactly what the token is going to do within your ecosystem, and you're going to build that functionality out. So... Um, as we've already discussed, like your IDO is on the, the 16th of November. I got the date here behind me. Um, so what have you got guys got planned for, you know, immediately after the IDO or following the IDO? What's the next steps and roadmap for the Center of Five product uh, project? David? Yeah, so it was just a little bit of a network issue. Yeah, so yeah, so so well, we have a lot of things, you know. Uh, first of all, we are looking to have a you know MVP by uh, end of Q1, early Q2. Uh, we we're very fortunate to have been teamed up with M Labs, who in my well, in many people's opinion, are one of the best uh, house call developers in, in space. Mm -hmm. So so we're happy for that. Uh, you know, Martin uh, has already agreed to do the test uh, concert. We are looking into maybe doing a, a test festival for, for our product. Uh, and yeah, and from from the IDO until that time, it's going to be a lot of grind for, for 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 me and also for Martin. You know, to 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 close out the deals with the with the labels and with the booking uh, companies and artists. You know, so so. Um, so that's like the near future. Uh, and also we know as we come from the music industry, we know also that there is a long uh, period of, of, of planning when it comes to world tour. So it's basically they, they you know, plan the tours between six months and one year ahead. So, so uh, yeah, so it's going to be a lot of grinding and a lot of uh, deal making basically. And, and, uh, and yeah, looking forward to have our, our first uh, testing of the product, um, hopefully at the end of, end of Q1, latest early Q2. And we have a lot of exciting uh, partnerships already lined up that we'll be yeah. discuss, you know, 
along the way to to keep people enthusiastic uh, about the project and know that you know this isn't we're not sleeping even though we're we're developing well so i'm gonna have to keep an eye out for uh you guys first festival should uh you thought of any names like centura fest or something like that <laughs> We have, we have been discussing it internally. So we will see, you know, uh, <laughs> we will see what we call it. But yeah, festivals, you know, our own festivals has also been, uh, been a discussion. Yeah, of course. Um, but uh, but that's and not... I think that, you know, the, the, the possibilities with this, uh, in this ecosystem is, is you know, unlimited. There's, there's so many ways to go about it, you know, and there will be maybe possibilities in the future to do to you know host our own concerts mm-hmm. like like festivals like we're testing up now but you know that uh, you can do do events privately you can do events you know uh, with the larger numbers and and you know you can even you know go into the music side of it as well cuz cuz this is uh, nft music live a universe right so so it, it includes all and it has the uh, possibility to expand quite so much from just our initial idea fantastic well it sounds like you guys have got so much on the horizon and uh you know i would encourage anyone watching this and our community to go and deep dive into uh into your website and into your documentation as well so we're going to have all of those links um in the description below as well as all the center of Eyes socials and everything they've been working on over the last couple of uh, of months and we're really really excited for your IDO once again uh don't don't forget the registration is open um so the IDO kicks off at 10 a.m utc on the 16th of november um so go ahead go on to ockham razor and make sure you register there because you don't want to miss and to reply so uh david martin it's been really great having you um thanks again for taking the time and coming on uh, it's been a great interview a pleasure, Elliot. So Always great to see you. I hope you guys have a good evening. <laughs> you too. Thanks. Yeah. Thank you Bye. so much. Cheers. Thank Take you. care. Bye-bye.